All right, so in this lesson number 10, we're going to talk about salts, okay? So salts, according to the big idea, is that they're neutral ionic compounds that are neither as acids or bases, basically. So salts, what are they? Well, we know, and we've heard of salts before, because we know when acid and base neutralizes, it forms a salt. But these are basically any compound, any ionic compound. that do not contain H plus, as we know because that's an acid, or OH minus in this formula. So where do they come from? Well, they come from the metal of a base when you're neutralizing, and the non-metal of the acid. So how do they form? Well, here's an example of this, okay? So if we talk about, for example, we have, let's say, sulfuric acid. So we have H2, SO4, plus, let's say, aluminum hydroxide, AlOH3. When they neutralize, they're going to first of all form water. We know that. But the next thing is they're going to form a salt. And the salt always comes from the metal of the base and the non-metal, the acid. So you're going to form aluminum sulfate. Now, what is the chemical form of aluminum sulfate? We know aluminum has a plus 3 charge. And we know sulfate has a plus or a negative 2 charge. So if we find the LCD and we balance them out, we're going to need to find that we need two aluminums and three sulfates. And if we balance this out, we're going to see that we're going to have three molecules of sulfuric acid. We're going to need two molecules of aluminum hydroxide. And we're going to need six molecules of water. And this aluminum sulfate right here, this is our salt. So that's our salt right there. So we're going to talk about what happens to these salts when they react. Likewise, how do we form these salts? So we have many different things we're going to talk about today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what are metal oxides? So metal oxides. So generally by the name, oxides means oxygen. What this here means is it's when a metal reacts with oxygen. What happens? What happens here is that when these metals react with oxygen, they form some sort of metal oxide. So for example, let's say you have MgO. This is a metal oxide. So that means they contain oxygen as their nonmetal. And when these metal oxides react with water, they form something special. They form a base. Metal oxide plus water will always form a base. So an example of that, such as for example, if you have Na2 sodium oxide, when it reacts with water, it will form NaOH. It will form the basic version of that metal oxide. So this is an example of what metal oxides will do when they react with water, because metal oxides are, in this case, a salt. But what about non-metal oxides? Non-metal oxides basically means when a non-metal reacts with oxygen. So when a non-metal reacts with oxygen. So in this case, it could form, for example, SO2. Now, when this non-metal oxide reacts with water, so we know that metal oxides, when it reacts with water, forms a base. Non-metal oxide plus water will form an acid. So an example of this would be if you have SO2 plus H2O, this will form sulfurous 
acid, H2SO3. So this is the opposite, as you can see. Where metal oxides, when they react with water, will form a base, while non-metal oxides, when they react, will form an acid. Now what about, and what's happening when an acid reacts with, for example, a metal? Well, in this case, we know acid-base neutralization will form a salt in water. But what happens when acid reacts with metal? What happens there? When acid reacts with a metal, it will always form not salt and water, but instead, when acid plus metal, what they form instead is, now it's going to be salt and hydrogen gas. So this is different from an acid-base neutralization. You might have done this as a lab before when we um, reacted, for example, hydrochloric acid with zinc metal or with uh, magnesium to form hydrogen gas. And you might have combusted this hydrogen gas in a test tube. It may have made a high-pitched uh, shrieking sound. So an example, this is for example when you had HCl plus, for example, zinc metal will form zinc chloride plus hydrogen gas. Now, this reaction, if you balanced it, would be 2HCl. So you need two molecules of HCl to react with one molecule of zinc. The last example I'm going to talk about is what happens when you have an acid react with some carbonates. Carbonates are any compound that contains Cl3 polyatomic ion. So if you look at our polyatomic chart, you're going to see that uh, carbonates are any compound that contains Cl3 2 minus. So it's a polyatomic compound, polyatomic ion. I mean. Now, when acid reacts with a carbonate, they actually neutralize acids because carbonates actually act as a base. And how they neutralize? Well, when an acid reacts with some carbonate compound, what it will form is it will form water and CO2 and some salt from that carbonate and acid. So what happens here is because carbonates could be in the form of, for example, limestones, calcites, those are types of carbonates. This, in a sense, neutralizes. So an example of a case like this that's neutralizing is, for example, if you had, let's say, sulfuric acid. Now when sulfuric acid reacts with, let's say, calcium carbonate, it's going to form H2O. It's going to form Cl2. But it's also going to form a salt. And the salt's going to be coming from the metal of the carbonate and the non-metal, the acid. So in this case, it's going to form CaSO4, calcium sulfate. So this is an example of what happens when acid reacts with carbonate. And remember, carbonates are, in a sense, a type of salt. As always, make sure that you stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you next time.